I started another caption contest with this picture, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, and I was surprised within a matter of days I had over 50 comments, and some of them are actually you know, quite good, and so you see the top 10 here in this video, along with a few others that I aggregated together. And there is some backstory, as always, with this. I'm going to play the clip that it's from. It's from a class session that I did at Marist College when I first started teaching there, teaching Introduction to Philosophy and Ethics. And this was from a class on Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, Book 1, where we're talking about what happiness is, what makes people happy. And back then I, I used to carry some money around in my wallet. Typically I don't, I don't do that too much anymore. And I had two $1 bills. I actually had $4 total in my wallet. And I took them out to illustrate a few points, as you can see in this clip here. I mean, you know, we've done this before, right? Take out these dollar bills. Um, and that today I happen to have four of them. Um, which is almost enough to like, you know, get you a meal in the cafeteria. So, uh, yeah, they sound really nice. Um, no, I, there's better sounding things. Oh, yeah, it feels so good. No, there's, there's nicer feeling things, right? Uh, like somebody said, uh, who is it that you can build a house out of money? Uh, or you could put in, you could use it for insulation. Oh, insulation. <laughs> yeah, um, you're not going to get much insulation out of this, but I suppose if you get a lot of these, <coughs> Probably be cheaper just to buy insulation, though. Um, there's not a lot you can get out of this by itself. I mean, you know, if I'm lonely, I can look at George. Oh, he's looking back at me. Now I don't feel so alone. I'd be nuts, right? Um, so as I said, we had a lot of really funny entries in the caption contest. We also got three here that are all, you know, aggregated together because they're all basically making the same joke, um, how it feels to receive the $1,400 stimulus check. You know, I mean, if you think about what would be involved in that, I'd actually have to go to an ATM and somehow get $1 bills out of it that I could rub on my, my face. But, it, you know, it's pretty funny nonetheless. But now we get into the really funny quips. So here's one that is actually one of my favorites, Thales Every Olive Harvest. And if you know anything about the story of Thales, he's the guy who said that everything is water. So a lot of people make fun of him. Ah, stupid Thales. And he actually got made fun of a good bit in his own time because he was constantly looking at the sky and, you know, fell into a drainage ditch. And but he managed to corner the market on a commodity that was needed for for olive harvesting, namely olive presses. He knew it was going to be a great year, so he went around and he bought up all the olive presses in his, his native area and made a ton of money, apparently. So, you know, who's to say you can't make money with philosophy, right? Uh, here's another good one. This is from, you know, Marxism taking commodity fetishism to a whole new level. It, it's a good joke. Um, it's a good joke in part because it's like turning Marx on his head in some respects, sort of like Marx supposedly turned Hegel on his head because commodity fetishism would be for commodities, right? <laughs> so not the dollar bill itself. I, I suppose you could say that it, it falls into that in some respect, but generally we think of it as the commodities themselves being the thing that gets turned into a, a fetish, right? Um, here's another good one, um, also from Marx. Um, here we go. Uh, demonstrating Marx, cash distributed equally to both cheeks. So, you know, Marx has that from each according to their ability to each according to their needs. Cheeks are pretty equal, so if they need dollar bills for any thing. I guess it's fair that each of them gets their own dollar bill. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Um, here's another great pun right here, making the real you dime money, right? And and this is, this is particularly apt because Aristotle's notion of happiness, as we know, is eudaimonia. That's the Greek term for it. And, you know, eudaimonia is a, a great way to uh, 
reframe that. Although, of course, the lesson was that money itself isn't going to get you what you want. Um, another punning one, here's Hegel's philosophy of right, right down to the bottom line. <laughs> so that's, that's a good one. I think the puns need to be, you know, apt, short, and right on target in order to be really funny. Um, here's another Hegel-related one. And this, this, kind of, this one requires a little bit more explanation. The noble consciousness after flattering the monarch. Well, what does that mean, right? Well, that's part of the phenomenology, the spirit section, where you've got this noble and base consciousness, and the noble consciousness gets revealed as being a bit hypocritical, uh, that it has to engage in some flattery with the, the monarch, and, you know, uh, money isn't supposed to matter except to the base consciousness, but it, but it turns out that it, it might to the noble consciousness as well. Here's a, another good one. Never dare a philosopher to put his money where his mouth is. Now, that's not, you know, actually going in my mouth, but pretty close to it, the cheeks, right? And I suppose you could say you're putting your money where your mouth is when you're engaging in an explanation of money where you're rubbing uh, dollar bills on your cheeks to illustrate a point, right? Um, here's another rather funny one, although, you know, completely off base in many respects. Sadler wiping the tears of his failing students with their tuition money. Um, it, it's kind of a funny thing to think about. I, you know, I would look at the, how much things cost students in terms of tuition money at most of the places that I taught. Generally, one or two of the students in the class was basically paying my my um, salary or my wages for teaching that class and all the rest was going to the rest of the school because you know as an adjunct you don't get paid that much I, I got paid pretty well in some places like Maris did a good job Marquette did a good job but even so so much of that tuition money is go is like just being funneled into everything else in the university and, you know, the other funny thing is I don't actually fail that many students. Um, generally, when students fail my classes, it's because they're not showing up and not doing the work. I set my classes up in such a way as to take students who are at risk and then get them, you know, to, to, to perform. Everybody's measured on performance, not on, you know, arbitrary measures or something like that. But it is kind of a funny thought nonetheless. Now, here's a good one. So Herbert Spencer looked something like this, right? And, and if, I'm going to show you a picture of Spencer in just a moment so you can see that, indeed, he kind of did look like that because of his sideburns. The irony is, who teaches Herbert Spencer? I don't think anybody. I mention him from time to time because I've actually read him, but I, I've met very few people who've actually read him or even know who he is. So that was a, that's a pretty good comment right there. Here's a picture of Spencer. Look at those sideburns. Man, that is quite a hairstyle, isn't it? Here is the last one. Uh, I think this is a particularly good one to go out on. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. I think many of you are familiar with that meme. And OK, it's kind of cool to get sucked into that <laughs> meme, right? The idea is that you pick something that's definitely not peak performance and you put it out there. And so, you know, a philosophy professor rubbing two one dollar bills on his cheeks to illustrate a point probably not peak performance, even in like the field of competitive philosophy or something like that. But um, it's a good joke nonetheless. So that's the captions this time around. Um, I'll be doing more of these in the future. So you can stay tuned to my channel. They're always going to be in the um, uh, tab for community. So if you're, you know, if you've like turned your notifications off, you probably want to turn them on so that you see things like this when they pop up. If you want to get in on it, if you just want to be a spectator, well, then you don't need to do that. So that's it for this one.